So if I start to just give an historical overview of secondary structure prediction, the idea is that for a number of alpha helices or so, I can just plot the residues. This small diagram is called sequence logo. It has, it's interesting and they look cute. The idea is that the most common residue is going to float to the top here and the more common it is, the larger the letter it is. I also measure the information context. So if a particular position always has alanine, I'm going to draw that one very tall. But this means that based on the residues, if I see a long stretch of residues that are lots of alanine and lots of leucines, and is roughly 20 units long, it's likely an alpha helix. There are better methods for it, but the first approximation. We can do the same things for beta sheets. Do you see here that there is a slightly different pattern here? Valines in particular. Valines don't like to be an alpha helix as much. Uh, it's harder to predict beta strands, mostly because the alpha helix is a very local structure. It's local in sequence. It's going to be 20 residues next to each other. While a single beta, I can predict a single beta strand, but that strand has to form a beta sheet together with strands that might be very far away in sequence. So this is much harder. Predicting B, the secondary structure when it's beta sheet uh, involves some sort of long range interactions. Harder to design the prediction algorithm, but today it largely has been cracked. The book in particular goes through quite a lot of detail of a beautiful old algorithm called Chu Fassman. So what Chu and Fassman did when I was your age, I spent probably three lectures in the class understanding this. So they looked at protein structures and average propensities. And if we accept that one residue should never break a helix, but if we take the average of say three or four adjacent residues, and if those four residues virtually always occur in helix, we can cal calculate what is the running average likelihood of something being either a helix or a sheet or a turn. And then we compare those. And as long as the most common of the, as long as the helix get the higher score than the beta sheet, we predict helix. But at some point when the beta sheet is higher, we turn over and say, ah, now we formed a beta sheet. The idea with Chu Fassman is that they're using all the information that we've talked about previously in the class, uh, free energies, probabilities of forming turn. It was a beautiful method. It was the first bioinformatics method. The only problem is that it's quite labor intensive to sit and do all these diagrams. You can do it. You can even do it in Excel. The reason we don't do it is that it's crappy. I'm sorry, I love, I'm a physicist, I love Chu Fassman, but they might at best get something like 40, 50% accuracy in secondary structure prediction. Even a very simple bio, modern bioinformatics method would get 60%, and modern ones based on multiple sequence alignments get instantly 80%, and the state of the art is 90. I think this too tells you something that how much the field has developed that I don't even think it's worth the time to teach the simple physics-based method anymore.